Hi kids, welcome to TLC's Creative Art Corner. I'm Miss Susan and today I have a new project for you. Well, I hope you had a blessed week and I really enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed doing all the other videos of doodling and marbling. And I really would like to see all of your work. It's really wonderful, so keep sending it in. And if you don't send it in here, you can send it into um, the Harvest Festival magazine and it'll get posted there. And uh, I'll give you the address at the end where everything can be sent. All right, so let's get started. Today, we're gonna make Play-Doh, okay? It's very easy. Okay, I've already made up four or five batches here to see how different things worked. Okay, so, so anyway, the things you will need are flour, salt, okay, oil, and it can be any oil, but I do not recommend coconut oil. I made this one with coconut oil. Not happy, not happy but I thought the olive oil was the best. Of course, this is you know extra virgin, you don't need that, I'm sure. Anyway, um, you need that and you'll need measuring cups, measuring spoons, um, water, okay, food colors, one for each bowl because you'll need five mixing bowls, one for all the big dry ingredients to be mixed in and then four separate bowls for each color, because I'm, you know, the, the recipe's for four colors. But the one I'm demonstrating today is just going to be one for one color, okay? But the measurements will be there right on the screen, okay? Now, you will also need something to store them in at the end, so it can be um, Ziploc bags or some saran, or if you have airtight containers. You also need a cutting board to work on and some um, stirring some spoons to stir with. Okay, so go get your ingredients, hit pause, come on back, and I'll meet you here. Okay, glad you're back. Okay, all set. Also, you wanna protect your surface. I should have said that before, but that, that goes all the time. I have already have this um, plastic tablecloth because I do so much art in my house. Um, but if you had like a garbage bag, which I've explained before, that makes cleanup all the easier. So anyway, here we go, let's go. I've already mixed up four of the colors. I mixed up a blue color, okay, with the wet ingredients, and I'll explain those in just a minute. And I mixed up the yellow. Okay, I'm just gonna put it aside here, and I mixed up some red. Okay, and today I think I'm going to go ahead and mix up some, a teal color maybe, you know, something different. No, purple, I think I'll go with purple. So anyway, the first thing I'm gonna do, this is my flower, I already measured that out is in, mix up the wet ingredients. Now this part of the recipe is the same for all four, okay? It's when you get to the dry ingredients, you would mix them here. So the first thing you're gonna do is take a quarter cup of water for, for one color, it's one quarter cup. Now I don't have a proper quarter cup. It could be four tablespoons. So I put four tablespoons in this, made a mark, and then I have my quarter cup. That was easier. And if you could end up with a little bit more, not a problem, not a problem. Okay, then you're gonna add your food color. And I think I said purple, and I think that's blue and red. So I luckily I have these, but maybe a quarter teaspoon of each would be a sufficient. Otherwise, you know, if you have like, you know, 10, 10 drops of each or so, see how this works out. And hopefully I won't knock it over. Now, if you have a scent, some essences, this is where you would put them in. Say you had banana essence and you wanted to make the yellow smell like banana or the orange like an orange or raspberry for the red, whatever. I don't know what they have in the store, but I know it's right next to the, um, to the food color. Okay, and then you're gonna stir this together. Let's see what color you get. Oh, this is more blue than red, so I'm gonna add more red. Cause I kinda wanted purple. I don't think these food colors make a good purple. It seems to me they don't, but I'm just gonna try. It doesn't hurt to try. No. This, this um, thing of mine isn't working that well. Oops. Um, pipette, if you have an or eyedropper thing. Oh, well, this is kinda gonna be kinda brownie looking, but okay, it doesn't matter, it's all experiment. Anyway, okay, and then you're gonna add in one half tablespoon of oil, and I have well, extra virgin olive oil, but canola oil, soy oil, any of those would be fine, vegetable oil. But like I said, I was not happy with the coconut oil, so I wouldn't go there. Okay, so you're gonna mix this. Okay, it takes a few stirs, okay? 
in. Now, oil and water doesn't mix, so don't get all, you know, like, oh, it's not mixing. It's mixing. It's there. Okay, it's just not um, what you think it is. You, 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 know, you think you want one looking like one, but it's okay. So you set that aside. Now, now I already measured out one cup of flour, okay, because I'm only making one quarter of the recipe because I already have all my other colors. I have one cup of flour. Now, if you're doing all four colors, you would put four cups of flour in a bigger bowl, okay? Now, I'm going to put six tablespoons of salt. Now, six tablespoons is a little bit over between uh, a one-third and one-half cup, you know? So I'm just measuring them this way. One, two, So, and then I'm going to mix it together. Now, in this bowl, it would be one and a half cups of salt. Now, this recipe I got from Before and After TV on YouTube, and uh, she was explaining that this is without um, cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is some kind of, uh, the extra salt here will preserve it. So this should be good for about a, a month if you keep it, keep it correctly. And then you just mix it together. You can use your hands or a spoon. I like to since this is already a hands-on activity, you might as well use your fingers, you know, why not? Get into the feel of it. Yes, it's great. Okay, now when that's mixed up, this is good. I'm going to set this aside. Oh, my little thing here, my little sample for me. Okay, set that aside. Then I'm going to take my liquid, okay, and I'm going to pour the dry ingredient into the liquid. Okay, and I'm going to do it pretty much a little bit at a time, you know, a little bit of stir here. Yeah, this is a darkest part of a dark purple. That's maybe it'll be interesting. Okay. I guess if you use less, you would get a nice little violet color or lilac color. But you know, you play with it. You know, you're a lot more creative than me. I'm just kind of giving you a I had a, a, a start here, you know. I want you to take it out of the box, you know. Take it a step further. Okay, that's looking okay. Now I'm going to add the rest of it. Okay. Okay, set that aside. Okay. Now, okay. So I'll see if I can put it up there to you. Okay, it's going to, you just keep dry. It's going to be crumbly looking for a while. And at some point, you're just going to get your fingers in it again. Now, the good thing about also putting the food color in at this point is that it doesn't stain your hands. But if you added the food po uh, the food color after, say you just did a white one, and if you just wanted a white color, you could just leave it as white, um, and that would be fine too. Okay, so this looks good. So I'm going to pick this up with my hands now, and I'll start to play with it now. You could, and then you'll be using the cutting board. I want to be sure I get it all pretty mixed. It's going to be crumbly and kind of ugh, at the beginning, but don't worry because that's fun. It's fun, it, and, but it comes together. And this is so soft. I was so impressed the next morning when I pulled it out of the refrigerator. It is a little bit hard because it's been in the refrigerator, but when you take it out at room temperature after a few minutes, it's just as soft, you know, I, I found. You know, but, it, but because of the oil, um, it's like a hand cream, and I was so impressed. My hands were so soft in the morning, you know. So I think you'll really like that, okay? So you just keep getting it in, okay? okay. And at some point, you can put it on the, the board here. And if it's too, too dry, you know, because everybody does it a little bit different, you might end up with too much flour, a little too much water. So if it's too dry, uh, you can add a little bit more water. Or if it's too wet, you add more flour. And you can put the flour here. It's like I put this, you know, just, you know, you know, like you're doing a pie pastry or something like that. And I'm sure Mom will help you. Yeah. So here you go. All right. There's more here. Got to work it all in. Okay. Great. Yeah, and this is a real good activity to develop your finger skills, your motor skills for uh, those ki kids that are in like kindergarten or um, you know pre-kindergarten and first grade to develop their skills for, you know, for writing and things like that. It just develops the fingers for holding pencils and pens and 
this this kind of thing. So it's very nice, very nice. Yeah, and I'm sure you can be really creative and do things. Now, oh yeah, this is coming together quite nice. Now because of that flowers all over the place, I'm going to not get, get it all in. Now it feels a little bit gritty because of the salt, but I don't think that that's an issue. I mean, it's, you know, don't eat it. You know, this isn't, you know, just because it might smell like something, if you put an essence in it, doesn't mean you should really try, try uh, eating it. But anyway, so here you go. This is it, and you can, you know, do lots of things with it. Now I tried to make a little pinch pot here, but then it, I put something on top of it. Oops, here I'll show you. And I just did coils of different colors, you know, and then sort of smish it together. Now if I wanted to keep this permanent rather than, you know, take it apart and do something else with it, I could bake it in the oven at 350 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Let, let me look my measurement, because uh, I don't have an oven. So let me look at my um, temperatures. It's 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 165 to 170 Celsius. Okay, and for that one, you would put it in for about a half hour, but keep checking it because you don't want it to go brown. Or at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is I think about 111 um, degrees centigrade. I don't know, you'd have to do that. I, I think I wrote it down wrong. But anyway, it would be 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how thick it is. But also you need to keep checking about every 15 minutes to see that it doesn't go brown. And then when it comes out and it's cool, you can put a varnish on it or a shellac, and um, which you can get really cheap and get one of those spray stuff that from the um, even city center or Star City rather, and uh, the co-op, yeah, the co-op pharmacy. So that was one thing uh, you can do with it, you know, or just to play with it and you know build things, you know, I mean, you could build something like that, or I tried to face the other day, but it fell apart because I didn't take care of it right, you know, but anyway, so there's lots of things you can do, and I, I like rolling it, and of course, I got all this stuff, so this is a purple I came up with, but um, yeah, not good, I mean, not bad, <laughs> but not good, I don't like the purple color, so it's not, to, not, to me, it's not good, okay, yeah. But you can experiment, you can make orange. I was making the orange color. I was able to, to get an orange, but this is the one I did with the canola oil. And I'm not as happy as I am with it as how soft these are. Even if you added a little more oil, it wouldn't be bad. This is still soft, you know? And it could probably be worked with a little bit, a bit more. But, you know, this is how you'd make a coil, you know? So there's lots and lots of things you can do, I'm sure. You, you would, you're much more creative than me, figure it out. Yeah, so anyway, so do some projects and post them and send them to us, okay? You can send them to wetransfer.com and the email would be administrator at tlckuwait.com, okay? And um, well, they'll be reviewed and then put on the site, so that would be great. And if not, if you want to send them to me for the Harvest Festival magazine, it would be m-a-e-b-e-a-t at yahoo.com and the numbers will be there on the screen. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Now, I'm going to add on to this another um, experiment that I did with hair conditioner and, um, what is it called, cornstarch. So I'll be adding that one right after this one. Now next week, I'm hoping to do making watercolors from natural ingredients, and we can try to do some painting with that. Okay, um, so that was the first recipe. Now I have a second recipe that does not include oil. It only has flour in it salt and water and a food color if you if you would like okay now the first thing um, we're going to do I already measured out it's one cup of flour and this recipe is from sealemon.com and they have lots of DIYs for, for kids and everybody it's great um, yeah first of all it's one cup of flour I already measured it out and then a half a cup of salt so here I have my half a cup okay and I'm gonna Try to pour the salt in. This is going to be a. I'll do it here first. Okay. This looks like half a cup. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, half a cup of salt. Okay. All right. You can mix this in together with your hands real quick. Okay, that's good. Okay. So hopefully this will work. I haven't really tried this one, but you know. It might work for you if it doesn't work for me. You never know. Okay, and then a half a cup of water. 
And if you wanted a food color, um, I would go ahead and put it here. You know, I'm gonna put blue. Yeah, there are a bunch of it, so it, it mixes in here. Stir it in a little bit. I use this end of the spoon. Oh, oh it, it just goes by itself. Okay, now you don't dump this in. You're supposed to add it gradually as you're working it in. You know, oops. Okay, this is part of it. You know, and start stirring it in. by a little. This might work, you know? This might just work. There we go. Yeah, slowly. So hopefully you can see, I'll get, I think this is probably in your way. I'm trying to look in the mirror there, or in the camera. See, it's coming together. That's only about a quarter of a cup of water. Yeah. Okay, let's put a little bit more in. And again, once it gets to that point where you can take it out and do it by your hand, you know, it's fine. And if it's too wet, then you add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, you add a little bit more water, you know, a little bit at a time. You never know. Oh, this looks like it's going to be okay. I'm just going to add the rest of the water now all the way around. You know, this is, this is looking really promising. Yeah. So it just takes up a lot more salt. It's probably going to be a little bit more gritty because it's so much salt in it. And it, you know, it's, would probably last again in the refrigerator in an airtight container or a baggie or a saran wrap, you know. Um, yeah, probably, I mean, she mentioned four weeks, you know. It's not edible, you know, because it's not edible ingredients per se, because we didn't cook it or anything. And this again, you know, if you made a sculpture or something, you could cook it, like I said, and varnish it when it was done. The same degrees as before, 350 Fahrenheit, or 200 uh, Fahrenheit, and then I don't remember what the equivalent is in uh, Celsius. Oh, this is looking okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a little sticky right now, but I think if you work with it more, yeah. Oh, nice. It's like a slime almost, you know? Not that you're going to get the thin slime, but it's certainly a nice tactile quality. Yeah. Well, here, let me get the salt out of the way. Yeah, and it, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a little sticky, so you might want to add a little flour on the, the board here. Okay, I don't know why I closed this up. Okay. All right, yeah. Oh, whoa. Occupational hazard there. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like, you know, slime is this way. You get all over your hands and it doesn't want to come off. Yeah, but I think this would work. This seems to be working. It's just a matter of getting the enough flour, but you don't want to add all the flour in the beginning. Yeah, here, I'm going to add more flour. I hope I have enough flour in the bag, so. Yeah, probably too much. Okay. Coming to the end of my flour. Oh, yes, nice, nice. Here, I'll get the bowl out of the way. Finish getting the stuff out of the bowl. There. Yeah, I think if you just play with this for a while, it'll be just fine. Yeah. That's my suggestion. Just play with it for a while. Yeah. Before you keep adding flour, you know, I think. You know, as you play with it, the moisture will just come out anyway with the heat of your hands and the air in the room, you know, whatever. But oh no, this is this is all right. I, I'm going to say this is a this is a go. You know, I would work with it a little bit more, but for the interest of time, yeah, I'm going to say this is a go. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you can. It's moldable. That's for sure. You know. Wow, you can make a. Yeah, this would be fun to play with, you know, even at this um, 
damp stage. This would be fun to work with. Yeah, I'd give this a go for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, you can make one of those hand prints here and bake. Oh, it's, you might have to put flour on your hand to do that though. Yeah, but no, this is, oh, this is, I'm happy here. I'm, I'm gonna be here all day. Boy, kids, you got me, got me hooked here. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, let me know how you think this recipe works. You know, if you try them both, let's, let's, you know, give me a comment. If you can, if there's a comment thing there on the YouTube, well, I'm making, making a lot of noise here. You know, it'd be great to hear what your comments are as well, you know? I would be very happy to know. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is a go. I really like this, you know? Even, even this sticky at the moment, but I just don't wanna keep, you know, going, because I wanna show you one more. Um, variation you can try you know just you know why not nothing better to do we've got a few more days of the lockdown um, you know and then you know what's after that anyway we don't know so anyway I'm gonna put this aside and talk to you about the next one okay let me wipe my hands a little bit okay the second one okay. now the second one is with hair conditioner okay now you get the cheapest hair conditioner this one is from uh, crafty girls uh, YouTube um, I don't know if it's craftygirls.com but it's crafty girls YouTube and they have got gazillions of things there, there are three girls three sisters that do a ton, bunch of tons of DIY videos so um, anyway get this one the scent that you like because you don't need to add a scent you could add a color, but this one looks like it's already green, so we'll just go with that. And um, it's this in cornstarch. So um, I know in America, you know, you go to the dollar store for a dollar, you can get, you know, VO5, I mean, a gazillion of these different brands um, with scents. I was at the co-op today and had a little bit of trouble finding something. This was all I, well, there was two I found, but this was, okay, I, I, the cheapest one I said. So this was the cheapest one I could find. But I'm sure if I went to other stores that were available. I already measured out one cup. This is one cup cornstarch, okay? And then a half a cup of, oh, my cup is dirty, but that's okay. Um, a half a cup of um, hair conditioner, okay? Now, they did it the other way around. They put the hair conditioner in the bowl first and then they put the thing. But I don't have a clean bowl, so I'm gonna do it this way, okay? Put the flour in and then I'll add this, okay? I don't think it makes a difference. It's all going to be in the same thing. Okay. Let's see how this smells. Yeah, it doesn't smell whole. It's supposed to be jasmine fresh. Okay. Yeah. 24 hour fragrant blossom. I don't know about that, but okay, we'll see. Okay, so there we go. We'll see what it does. Well, I'm going to make this one. Okay. Take a spoon. And again, you know, if it's too dry, you know, you add more of the conditioner. If it's too wet, you add more cornstarch. Okay. Oh, goodness me. Let's see what it does. Let's see. I wonder if this could be done with flour as well. But no Okay. Let's see. They thought it was the the softest, softest stuff. And it may well be, you know, it may well be. Might be better to have a deeper bowl. I think that, you know, therein lies some of my problems because I don't have a deep, deep bowl I use, you know. But it, you know, it does. You use what you have. That's what you. That's the best stuff to use is what you have. Otherwise, you have to go out and buy something, and then it's not a, it's you know, it's not a economical adventure. And we want to try to just work with what we have in the house. This is probably going to be a little too wet at this point. Yeah, I can see it's real creamy and wet and lumpy. But I think you work that out. See how is it? Oh, it's really. I'm going to add more of this right away. Maybe that's why you use the cheaper stuff. Oops. There we go. Yeah, 
it's all manageable. I really think it's all manageable. It's just, you know, everybody's hand is different when you come to these things, you know? I think, you know. Five people can make the same recipe and you're gonna get five different, whatever the recipe was of, you know? Okay, okay. It's still a little sticky, but I, I'm, I'm gonna think this is gonna be nice. Here we go, put that aside. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And this is gonna condition not only your hair when you're, you know, don't use this to wash your hair, to condition your hair, but yeah, it's gonna not only condition, it will also condition your hands, I, I no doubt about it. So if you've got dry hands, this is what you wanna use. Oh yeah, this will be really nice. A little bit more flour, or not flour, what is this stuff called? Cornstarch. Yeah, and I and now again, I think you're just playing with it will dry it a little bit more. Oops, sorry. Oops, I'm making a mess in my house. Good thing. Oh, per, oh, this is, oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah, but you would decide how soft you want it, or if you wanted to add, keep adding um, um, cornstarch to it. And I, my guess is, if it, you know, you, when you put it in your airtight container, you know, your baggie or whatever it is, you're going to store it in. That, you know, next time you come out to play, you could add a little bit of that if it was too dry, or a little bit, of, you know. Yeah. So there's many ways to. Oh, yeah. This is, yeah, this is it, kids. This is it, yeah. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna enjoy it, no doubt about it. So when you're all finished, okay, I forgot to tell you, um, you can store it in a, a Ziploc bag, okay, and keep it, get the air out of it. Okay, here's a Ziploc bag from before, okay. Anyway, here you go. And be sure you get the air out of the bag so it's airtight, you know, or you can put it in a container. And then you keep it in the refrigerator until you play with it again. And it should stay fresh. The direction said that it would stay fresh for maybe a month. Who knows? Okay, I guess it would depend on how many times you, you work with it. Or another thing you can do is wrap it in saran, which is what I often do because I have saran all over the house and I save them when I buy groceries. Okay, so you would wrap it tight in saran each time you use it. So that's another way you can do it. Or if you had a container, you could stick it in a container. Okay, so there you have it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project and I look forward to seeing all of your work. Until then, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.